My name is Madeline. Um, I'm a sophomore studying biology here at Mizzou. Um, I like soccer, I like singing, and I really like being on the E3 team, so this is a shameless plug. You guys should think, consider joining us next year. Um, all right, so do your part regardless of feeling. Let's break down the title of this talk. Do your part. What does that mean? When I say do your part, I mean God's mission for you. That's our theme for this series. Um, and God's mission for you is what he's calling you to do. So that's kind of what I'll be referring to throughout this talk. Second part of the title, regardless of feeling. What even are feelings? It's, it's like I know what they are, but it's really hard to describe. So I kind of went to the internet to, you know, just to see how I can explain this. And there's a lot of things about the differences between feelings and emotions, and it was really confusing. They're like psychological websites. So you can ask Ryan Barr, psychology major, if you have questions about that. Um, so I just went to the dictionary, because that was a little simpler. Um, and the dictionary said, Feelings are an emotional state or reaction. That doesn't really actually tell me much either. So basically what I got from that is feelings are related to our emotions. And we kind of know what our emotions are. That's sadness, happiness, fear, anger. Um, and we can feel rejection for, from you know, anger and fear. Um, and feelings and emotions, they can make us feel worth something, but they can also make us feel not worth anything. Feelings and emotions can motivate us to do great things, but they can also paralyze <coughs> and debilitate us. And so yeah, we know that, um, but that's not really the important part. The important part that I want you to get from this is that our feelings vary a lot. Like, if you've ever been super nervous or worried or scared about something one night and then you sleep on it and you feel better the next morning, like, our feelings change day to day. And if we can't base our mission in life on feelings if they vary so much. So we're supposed to do our part regardless of feeling. And why should we do that? It's because God doesn't operate on feelings. You know, if we're going to be doing God's mission, we can't operate on our own feelings because that's not how he works. So how does God work? God is love. That's pretty simple. Like, we know God as a loving being that loves us so much, and he does everything out of love for us. And he created us, in his image. And his and if we're created in his image, then we're created out of love as well. So when we're doing God's mission and we're doing what we're called to do, then our mission should be based out of love. And guess what? Love is not a feeling. We've heard that before, right? Love is a choice, love is a decision, love is constant especially God's love. So we can't do our part regardless of feeling if our part is out of love. So you may have heard like a husband and a wife you know, should choose to love each other every day. They have to make that decision. So we should choose to do God's mission and to answer God's call every single day. And that is how we will love God who created us. And that's how we can love others. And loving others is also loving God. Okay, so now maybe you get why we're not supposed to rely on our feelings to motivate us. But why do we keep doing that over and over again? And that's because it's so easy. There are three kind of general categories I feel I'm going to put like how we might feel about our mission. And the first one is feeling inadequate. There's so many times that the world will try to knock us down and tell us we're not good enough. 
you know, we have society, we have maybe our friends, maybe our not friends, um, <laughs> tell us that we're not good enough all the time. And we have Satan, you know, whispering things in our ear, telling us, you know, you're inadequate. <coughs> we also compare ourselves to other people. You know, this person's really great and they have these gifts and talents or they're in this circumstance, so there's no way that I could do that. It's so easy to think that way. But part of the prayer that we read tonight was, he has committed some work for me, which he has not committed to another. We can't compare ourselves to other people because God has a special mission for each and every one of you that was intended just for you. Um, some, and a story about myself as far as feeling inadequate is towards the end of high school, um, I was kind of rejected for like a lot of different leadership positions. One of them was um, I went on this really awesome treat, retreat called Kairos my junior year. Um, and I got a lot of spiritual fulfillment from that. I felt really on fire for God. And all I wanted to do senior year was lead a Kairos because I wanted those juniors to experience what I experienced. And I thought that I was qualified for that. I thought I was living my life in a way that I'd be a good example, and I thought I had, you know, enough desire to do that to be chosen. But I wasn't chosen. And I was really confused. Um, and I felt kind of broken down after that. I felt rejected. And eventually I like, kind of tried to work out of that, tell myself there's a reason. But then another thing happened senior year where I was rejected from a leadership position. And then another thing happened and I began to just tell myself over and over again, I guess you're just not a leader, Madeline. And I didn't apply for certain things in college and there's a lot of opportunities that I missed because of this feeling that I was inadequate to lead. And the point is not that I didn't get the leadership positions that I want. Because, you know, we're not called to be a leader in every capacity of our life. We need some leaders and then we need other people as well. Um, the point is that I missed so many opportunities. I missed a lot of, you know, maybe those little calls that God was speaking to me because I was so focused on my own inadequacy. So yeah, it's easy to feel not worthy. But this is why that's absolutely ridiculous. God gives us the graces that we need to live out our mission. God doesn't call the ready or the qualified. Kayla said this in one of her talks earlier this year. He doesn't call the ready or the qualified. He qualifies and he readies the called. There are countless biblical examples of this. Jesus is continually choosing people that, you know, society wouldn't think is the holiest person to do his work. You know, people who didn't feel that they were ready to answer his call, but he chose them anyway. And I'm just going to go through them because I think it's really impactful how many times this happened. The first story that I thought of was David and Goliath. David was this little boy, like small person, and he took down Goliath, this giant. And I'm sure he was, I know he was scared and nervous, and he didn't feel like maybe he could do it, but he did it anyway. And he was able to take down Goliath. The next, the next example is the call of Moses. When God called Moses in the burning bush, the, one of the first things he said was, Lord, but I am nothing. How can I lead the Israelites out of Israel? Another example is Jonah and the whale. And this is a little different. This is about not feeling ready. Jonah literally ran away. Like, he ran away from God. <laughs> Obviously, he wasn't ready. But God still called him to preach to the people of Nineveh. 
when Jesus was calling the apostles, fishermen, drop your nets. I'm sure they weren't ready at that time. Like, if God or Jesus came up to me when I was doing, you know, my organic chemistry problems, like, yeah, drop your homework, come follow me. Yeah, maybe that sounds like a better option, but um, <laughs> it's still like, well, I'm right in the middle of this, you know? Um, the next example is the call of Zacchaeus. And the cool thing about Zacchaeus was he actually answered God's call right away, which I think is something that we can learn from. But he was a tax collector. He was a sinner, you know. I mean, we're all sinners, but, you know, the people at the time, the tax collectors, they're the worst. Um, <laughs> so, um... You know, it was other people that were saying, but he's a sinner, Jesus. Like, Lord, why are you why are you calling him? Jesus chose him anyway. The call of Levi, the call of Saul, you know, all people that we would have never considered, you know, the most holy. Jesus continued to call those people. So it's not about feeling like you're holy enough or you're worthy enough to do his work. God is calling every one of us. On the contrary, we can also feel really on fire for God and really ready. And this can happen maybe after you come back from a retreat. I know I always feel really pumped up after I come back from a retreat. Or a good conversation with a friend after a Bible study, listening to a good talk, reading a really good article. You know, the these moments where we really get it and we really want to serve God, take advantage of those. Because when you're feeling on fire for God, he's calling you to your mission. So he's calling you to your mission when you're feeling inadequate and when you're feeling on fire for him. But he's also calling you when you don't feel anything. And maybe you were on fire and you lost that fire. Maybe you felt inadequate and you overcame that, but you're kind of falling back into those habits of harmful thoughts again. Maybe you've never felt the presence of God or that he was calling you to do anything. But even when you don't feel anything, God is still calling you to do your mission. I know that an example for me is the transition from winter break into this semester. Um, I had two really awesome experiences over winter break. I got to go to Nashville with the Newman Center to see this really awesome conference, learned a lot about my faith, a lot of what I could do with my faith here on campus. Um, and then I went to Honduras and I got to serve the poor, um, live in solidarity with them while we built a water system, both really awesome experiences, both things that I was really passionate about. And then I came back to school and it was like, well, now you have to go get school supplies and you have to start actually do, like I have two assignments due before the first day of class. Um, you have to like start cooking meals for yourself again. You have to go to these meetings and I don't know, I didn't even want to see people. I didn't feel anything. I didn't have motivation for anything, let alone my faith. And I was really in a rut that first week. And it was really tempting to just sink into that rut and not do anything about it. Um, but I forced myself to go to daily mass. And then I forced myself to go to holy hour. And then I forced myself to continue praying. And then I went on the um, day-long ministry retreat the Saturday after we got back. And that's kind of after talking with friends and, you know, perseverance and prayer, I was able to kind of get back into it. But it was so tempting to just sit there and not feel anything and think that, well, I don't think I'm going to do, you know, a whole lot this semester at least as far as my faith goes, because I just don't know what's going on. 
So why is choosing to answer the call so important? The reason why it's so important is that your mission is not just about you. One of the lines in the prayer says, I am a link in a chain, a bond of connection between persons. When you focus on your own weaknesses and your own feelings, you're being selfish. And that's not loving God. Because remember when I said God made you in his image and you're called to love him? You're not loving him when you're criticizing yourself because he created you. He knows you. He knows every part of you, including your weaknesses. And he's still calling you to love him. And he's still calling you to love other people. He still chooses you. So you can't say to God, like, well, I can't, you know, leave this Bible study or do X, Y, and Z because I have this fault or this weakness. He knows that. He created you. And he still calls you to do that. And when you're feeling in a rut and like you don't feel anything, still go to Mass, still go to a church service, still come to E3, still put yourself in prayer because your mission is not about you. And by going to Mass, you can have an effect on other people. Other people might see your perseverance and be inspired by that. If you're leading a Bible study and you just don't know what to do this week, you still got to do it because there are people in your Bible study that are counting on you. We're all in different places. And so maybe your mission isn't leading a Bible study or talking to a friend on campus about your faith or anything like that. Maybe it's just getting back into your faith again. But regardless of how you feel about yourself, you're still called to maybe start getting back into prayer, start going to Mass again. So let's forget about all this feeling business. Let's forget about those feelings and remember that we are chosen. We are chosen for something more. We are chosen to answer God's call.